Hi everyone, my name is Shannon. Welcome to King Family Farm. Um, it's evening, so the light is fantastic, but it's going very quickly. And I need to pot up some perennials. So I'm in my sun porch. Um, there's no heat in here, but the perennials don't really care if it's gonna get a little cool tonight. Um, it's not really gonna hurt them. So I'm gonna try and get some of these um, bare root plants potted up just because it needs to happen. And I'm kind of running out of time. So I'm trying to make myself some room. And so I have one gallon pots. That's all I'm doing. And I had ordered a bunch of plants. And as you can see, they need to get out of this bag. So it's time. Um, all right. So these ones are hostas, and they're called blue ivory. And they ain't too blue right now um, because they need a little more light because they've been in a bag, in a box. So what we're going to do is get these potted up and I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I don't get really fancy. I just kind of stuff them in there, put some soil around them and away we go. So I'm gonna pot some plants. So basically, I have this bale of pro mix. Nothing fancy. Um, premium all-purpose mix. Ideal for seed starting in indoor and outdoor planting. And I'm just gonna cut it open. I recommend, if you can, I have another bin downstairs, but I don't really want to pot downstairs and then haul it all upstairs, so I'm up here with it. But normally I would dump this into like a bin and use it from there because it's a little bit easier um, and a little less messy when you're indoors. So essentially, I'm going to loosen up a bit, put some soil in the bottom of the pot. So it's about half, half full. And you don't want to like ball the roots all up really tight. You kind of want to spread them out a bit and like give the plant some room. And I like to hold it kind of in the center about the height that I want it. And then I'm just gonna start, this is why a nice big wide like tote is a great way to do this. And I'm just gonna start putting some soil in. And just like that. And what I'm also gonna do after is I will come by and um, after and give everything a good drink. And that'll get rid of any real air pockets. So that's it. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and I need to go get my tape and get all these pots labeled because I ain't going to remember what they are. So it's really important to label stuff. For some reason, I am out of my stakes that I normally use, which is like this. This is a Pandora's box, day lily. So, and I just try and keep everything really well labeled. But these are looking fantastic they're a little pale but they'll be fine once they get a bit of light and they're in here in my sunroom for I don't know, a couple days once they're in here for a couple days they'll be just fine so the sunroom basically is just going to give them a bit of protection from the elements frost isn't actually going to touch them even though it's going to get a little bit cold but it's not going to be cold all night just a couple hours so it's not a huge deal um, and without the wind, it's significantly warmer in here. Actually, I'm going to put these on the floor. <clears throat> so I have about 200 perennials to pot up. I just need a little more. There we go. Need a little more room. So we kind of originally were going to do this room as a kind of a two season, three season with screens, but I think it's eventually going to end up as a four season room. So it's kind of mid renovation, but, and it's not fully insulated, but we did put proper 
windows in it last year. So I'm using it right now to get my plants going. Just my perennials. Um, and then on the weekend, I think I'll take them from here and I'm going to move them down to, uh, down to my grow tent where I showed you the other day, it looks like some animal went through and dug through all my pots. Um, I think that was like a winter thing, so I'm not super concerned. I'm gonna put these in there. The plants will be less appealing than just having pots of soil that used to have tomatoes. So this is a fairly light mix. It's probably, I don't think there's any actual soil in here. It's mostly peat based. You don't want to get anything too fancy. You don't want to use garden soil when you're going into pots. It's just too heavy. Um, and it doesn't, it retains too much water as opposed to not enough water. It depends on, um, how many, these pots, this is a gallon. I'm not sure how many pots this bag will do because they sell it by weight or cubic feet because that makes sense. So we, our weather has kind of cooled down a little bit. Um, it's cloudy kind of blah. Saturday was beautiful and now we've kind of gone back to this bleh, kind of gray springy type weather and it's okay we need it. The soil is drying out even though we're getting a bit of rain the breeze um, and the little bit of frost that we're getting at freeze thaw actually dries the soil out a little bit so we're going to be able to get out there real soon and get some seedlings in. And that's kind of my plan for the weekend. So, um, so we're in 3B. We're in northwestern New Brunswick. Um, our last frost date in the spring is around May 23rd-ish. Depends. I think it's going to carry a bit into June this year. Um, which is more of an old wives' tale, but it has to do with the full moon, um, which I think is early in June this year. I have to look at the calendar again. And then our first frost is September 22nd. So we actually have a fairly short growing season. And it is important for you to remember that those are like those are averages, they're 10 year averages. I know everybody's like zone recently has changed. Um, but I don't think it's changed enough for us to be super concerned. Um, I mean, it's not like I'm gonna go get a whole bunch of perennials I've never grown before because our zone has possibly changed. For the most part, I'm going to stick with plants that are hardy to zone three simply because then I don't have to worry about trying to stop them from uh, dying and protecting them and going around and tarping everything. And I just, I don't really have a whole lot of time for that. So um, I just, I'm going to continue with the frost dates that we have. Um, I will be starting more I think I'm done starting my tomatoes I have to check I need a few more things started and then I've got to start succession planting um, my sunflowers so essentially with succession planting The goal is to have a continuous supply of plants through the year. 
So, especially the things, even with radishes, now I'm usually worried about flowers, um, but things like radishes, don't plant all the radishes you want in one go. You want to plant them a few at a time. So let's say you plant like two weeks worth and then you would plant like another two weeks worth, two weeks later. And then you don't have all your blooms coming at once or all your radishes coming at once and then you don't have any radishes. The idea is to just continually, it's a really nice root system on that one. So the, the idea is to have like this continual um, supply of radishes. Now, they have a tendency to get really hot and spicy in the summer. Um, so you want to make sure that they A, get lots of water. B, you could probably put them under some shade cloth and that would be really helpful. You could also look at... Um, growing different varieties and see which ones. I find for me, the French breakfast um, are the least likely to get all pithy and which is like they're kind of hollow inside. Um, So I would plant, for me, now I'm selling them, so I grow a whole lot more. But I still succession plant them because I don't want to have them at one market and then not have them for the rest of the year. I want a continual supply. And when they get too big, they get hollow and they get fibrous. It's a really weird texture. So you want to collect them a continual supply of just the right size. And I like having baby beets as well. See, this one's just getting ready to open its leaves up. I like baby beets as well, so I succession plant them so that unless I'm planning on canning that particular group of beets, the idea is that I'm only going to have just baby ones when I want them and a few at a time. But, I mean, if you're looking to can beets, then you would want to plant... A whole bunch of them so they all come in at once but if you want to have canning beets and like smaller ones for salads and stuff then yeah you might want to consider succession planting and then with that in mind you need to pay attention to your um, that's where it becomes important your frost dates because you need to count back from your frost date and make sure you have enough time for whatever it is you're planting to produce before it freezes and you need to also remember that as the days get shorter and colder it takes longer for things to ripen So I'm just gonna continue on with these. I'm gonna be here a while. I have, like I said, I've probably got about 200 perennials to pot up. So right here is some of the ones I've already done. These are the Pandora's box. Daylilies, and then you can see I've got rhubarb that just looks fantastic. Some of it's not as far along. So I'm just kind of plugging away at it a little bit every night when I get home from work. And uh, it's coming along really nice. Just the one bag so far of the Hosta. Um, they're gonna look great. That one right there kind of shows off the color. It'll get a little darker. So I'm gonna get some water on them and they'll look great. So I'm gonna continue potting up. This can take me ages. I'm not gonna get it all done tonight. 
But I just thought I would share what I was doing and how I pot up some perennials when I get my bare root ones. I don't wait until I can get them in the ground. I pot them up, I let them develop, and that way if they don't get in the ground right away, they're going to survive. And that's what's really important. You've spent the money on them, so get them in some soil, get them growing, and then you can plant them when you're ready. And if that's not until August, as long as you water them, that's okay. So thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you here next time on the farm.